Hello all welcome back. So in this tutorial we'll be quickly looking at the software development for the Connect 6 game. So most of the things here we have already discussed for our snake game. So I'll be only discussing about the extra thing uh, that we should be careful uh, when we're designing this game. So I have already written the software everything. So again this is uh, modularized. There are multiple source codes and header files so you can see here and many of them we have already seen so we have this phone.h which has the bitmap for all the characters then we have this uh, video.h and video.c for our video make controller and our graphics.h and graphics.c for low level drawing drawing the frame um, printing the character printing the string things like that then uh, we also have the Zymos, so that is not appearing here because the source code for Zymos is made part of the driver for the Zymos IP. So it will be directly coming under the BSP. So if you press F3, he will open it. Okay? So it's not here, but it is uh, part of the BSP now. And we have all the uh, functions that we discussed in the previous tutorial. Now uh, there is this top file game.top game top dot c uh, which is the topmost file uh, which controls the overall game then we have this connect 6.h and connect 6.c and this is the header file and the source code which has the function specific to connect 6 again we have functions to show the welcome screen we have function to clear the board when we are finished playing and there are functions which enable FPGA to play, then user to play, things like that. There are also functions to check whether game is over. So anytime game is over, he will he will detect it and he will show it to you. And uh, there are other functions like he will make sure uh, a placement is a valid. That means uh, suppose FPGA has placed some stone, you cannot place a stone on top of it. Okay, so this will make sure you are not doing such kind of things and there are other utility functions here now first thing to remember is in this particular case we are using two uart interfaces actually you need only one uart interface uh, because we'll be displaying all the messages scroll score everything on on our monitor but still during debugging you may need our normal uart to see what is going on uh, yeah as i mentioned especially for a debugging purpose or if if you want to see these kind of messages like if the interrupt controller fails or things like that for seeing that we will still need our UART controller so we'll be having two UART interfaces one is coming from the zinc chip to our computer through the external UART interface and one UART interface is between the PS and PL of the zinc chip through the EMIO interface now previously we didn't have this case we had only one UART interface and uh, that UART interface is UART1 okay so if you go to our MIO configuration there are two UARTs uh, we have UART0 and UART1 and usually only UART1 is in enabled this is the one connected to the external world this time we enabled UART0 also which is connected to the PL part. So, so wherever you have this SIL printf, you need to tell the software which UART interface should be used for doing this uh, standard input output. So you have printf, SIL printf, or scanf. Which UART should be used for these purposes? You should specify. So previously we had only one UART interface. So by default he will always use UART one. But since now we enabled UART zero. Uh, by default, when you come to SDK, UART0 will be enabled for all the standard input output. So if you do a print like this, this information will be going to the PL. That's not what we need. This information should be coming to our uh, serial terminal, the Toretop. So what you need to do is you should go to this BSP uh, once you start the project and go to the BSP settings. And uh, there under standalone, there is an option which interface is the std in and std out okay so it might be uart0 
and you should change it to UART1. In all other previous projects, by default, it will be UART1 because only that one is enabled. Because this time UART0 is also enabled, he, he by default is putting UART0 here. So you need to change it to UART1. UART0 we are actually using for communication between PS and PL where our ball is sitting. So that is one interesting thing. Another thing is the callback functions for Zymos. So remember when we developed the driver for Zymos, the mouse, uh, we had two callback functions uh, and those functions will be called either when the mouse moves or whenever you press a mouse button. Okay. So for this particular game, what I need is whenever I move the mouse, I need to see a pointer on the screen. That is one thing. And whenever I press the mouse button, if it is uh, if it is the user playing, okay, uh, you should be placing a stone on the board. Okay, so that's what we need. So in the previous Zymos video, uh, we just had some dummy callback function which does nothing, just prints like callback call. But here we have proper callback functions. So here you can see press callback. This function will be called whenever the mouse button is pressed. And we have more called move callback, which will be called whenever the mouse moves. Okay. Now there are a few things done here. Okay, so you can see whenever this function is called, okay, whenever mouse moves, what we do is we get the current mouse position from the IP. This I have discussed in the previous tutorial itself. So we are reading from this particular offset register, position offset register, that will give me the X and Y coordinates of the mouse. mouse. Okay, now I need to show a pointer at that location. Okay, so what I have done is, okay, I have drawn a small pointer again in the software that I showed you before this GLCD on creator and uh, that bitmap corresponding to pointer I have stored as a bitmap for space or empty. Okay, so in this case, if I try to print anything as a space empty, he'll be actually showing a, a point, a kind of thing. Okay, so that's one shortcut. Uh, I could have put it some other location, but still, this is good enough actually. So that is one thing. So he will show a pointer at that location. That's what he's going to do. Now, here there is the problem. So when you press the button, you should feel like the pointer is moving. Okay, so what we need to do is uh, when the pointer moves, we need to replace the previous data at the current location of the pointer and display the pointer at the next location. So that is what is uh, done here actually. So this uh, read grid data, what happens is he will read the current data from your frame buffer, from your video buffer, which is uh, supposed to be sitting behind the pointer and he will internally store it. Okay, so this function uh, that is sitting uh, sitting here, and that is actually you can see it is reading uh, the data from the video frame, and he is storing that information. Where is that information stored? That information is actually stored in in this location called grid data. So here you can see something called this my pointer. That is actually a structure. Okay, so the pointer that you are showing, uh, seeing on the screen, I'm uh, modeling it as a structure. So it has uh, some field which can store the data which the pointer is overwriting. So you have something on the screen and you need to show a pointer on the screen. Uh, so what we are basically doing is first we will read the current data where the pointer will be displayed and store it here. After that, we put the pointer on top of that. So you will feel like uh, there is pointer on the screen. Now, when you are moving the pointer, you need to restore this data and take the data from the new position and put it here. Then only you will feel like the pointer is moving. 
otherwise you will see like there is a trail of pointers right so you keep on seeing the pointer so that is the uh, a technique uh, done here okay so that's what is happening here uh, when you move the mouse move callback okay so that is what is happening now press callback that is the function which will be called whenever you press a button so when you press a button uh, as i mentioned before if it is user playing you are supposed to place a stone on the screen now it is possible uh, you press while the fpga is playing in that case stone shouldn't be placed okay so that is control using this variable this mouse click thing so whenever fpga is playing or when our user is not supposed to press the button this will be made one disable mouse click so even if you press the button nothing happens okay but if this is zero that means you are allowed to press the button in that case what he will check is he will check whether you are doing a valid placement uh, that basically makes sure the mouse pointer is within the playing area if the mouse pointer is outside the playing area again he shouldn't place any uh, stone there so he makes sure that is valid position where you can place the stone as i mentioned before again it shouldn't be a place where there is already a stone so that he makes sure and he makes sure and he just puts a stone here using using this function now again that stone is nothing but uh, letter o from our phone.h again so i have changed the uh, bitmap for letter o here this was the original one i replaced it with this one so it will look like a field o which looks like a stone so again uh, i can control the color when i am uh, displaying it on the screen so i can use the same bitmap for showing it as uh, black or white okay so that's the main thing and uh, remaining thing i think when you read uh, you might understand i haven't heavily commented but uh, you can try to read and understand because i guess most of them are clear from the name itself okay so first we will be showing that welcome screen it will just show like connect six and it will give some time for the game to start and this is basically to reset the Kodak 6 IP. So in the block design, remember, uh, we don't have any any direct uh, AXI interface to our Kodak 6 IP. So in order to reset the IP, what we did was we took a GPIO IP and the output from the GPIO is connected to the reset of our Kodak 6. Okay? So that is what is exploited here. So you are writing 1 to that GPIO IP, then you are writing 0 to that GPIO IP. So it's like you asserted the reset, then you remove the reset. There will be some time uh, physically between each function call. So he will get sufficient time. Then, okay, this function, it will clear the board and he will draw the table in orange color. Then he will just call this move back function okay this is again a technique used so that the mouse pointer is showed when the game start otherwise when the game start the mouse pointer you can't see because this function is called only when you press some button the four direction button right so when you start this game you won't see any pointer unless you press some button so to avoid it uh, this uh, callback function is explicitly called once here now later this function will be called only by the isr for uh, zymos this variable is basically saying uh, first move so the next move is the first move that is required because whoever is playing first he can place only one stone and all the subsequent moves there will be two stones that's why this one so this while loop then we actually enter this while loop so we will come out of this second while loop only uh, when one of the players win either fpga or the user only in that case it will come out of this while loop then we will wait for some time and we reinitialize everything 
and just restart the game okay so that is what is happening here so here we have the function this is the function okay uh, which is used for fpga playing and this is the function used for user playing so here we are just checking uh, who is playing first so if it is fpga we will do the order first fpga then user then again fpga then again user so on and so forth if it is first user we'll start with user then fpga then user then fpga so on and so forth okay straightforward okay now uh, this function entirely it will uh, it will check whether fpga won or not you can see at the end of the function we are checking whether game over so if that returns true that means fpga won so similarly we have this user play and you can see there also we are checking whether user has won or not so yeah user play here you are checking whether user won now this variable is not set here this variable is set under button press callback okay so whenever you place a stone we will immediately check uh, whether you have won or not so if you have one he is setting this global variable and uh, that will be detected by this function and it will basically return one if you have one okay yeah because that uh, is a, a callback function so that is not explicitly called from here it is called from the isr so that's why that function cannot return some value directly here we are using a global variable for communication between that callback function and this function so this function will be called and he is waiting for you to press the button he is waiting until you are pressing twice in normal scenario but uh, if it is your first move he is waiting only for one press so as soon as press once he will return in this case he is not checking whether you won or not because it's impossible you are the guy who is playing first and you can't win when you are starting the game right so that's why he's not checking whether you won if you are starting the game in all other cases he's waiting for you to press the mouse twice and uh, as soon as you press it twice he will check whether you won or not if you won the game he will return one here and on the screen he will show like you won okay so that's it uh, again source code i have put you can uh, try to play against it and try to see whether you can really win or not uh, now uh, i will show the video where i am playing and you can quickly see what is going okay so when you start the game you will see this welcome screen connect six and you will notice like instead of o uh, it looks like a uh, stone here like a field circle here as I mentioned before it's because I replaced the bitmap for O with the bitmap for a stone kind of thing so that's why it is coming like that so then there will be this countdown and after that he will display the playing area the 19 by 19 grid and you can see the mouse pointer he will always show the mouse pointer at the beginning at the center of your screen okay because that's how Zymos is configured his initial position will be always the center of your screen so and we are calling that uh, callback function explicitly that's why the pointer you can see here on the right he will show like who is supposed to play next and there you will notice like instead of space it is showing a pointer here uh, same reason uh, in the bitmap i have replaced space with uh, a pointer so that's why you are you are seeing like that now uh, when you start the game uh, the first chance will be always to the user to you so you'll be playing with black you are supposed to place only one stone now in order to place a stone uh, again uh, he will be going to place at the junction so to make life easier what you can do is you can place the pointer inside any square here and you can press that middle button on the board so he will always place the stone on the bottom right corner so if you press it at this point of time uh, the stone will be placed here actually okay so that makes life easier 
Okay, so now I, I place the black one. Uh, immediately FPGA places. So he takes few milliseconds. So you, you, you will feel like it's happening immediate. He's actually showing FPGA turn here, but it's happening so fast. You won't be able to see it. So I placed only one because I'm starting with black and he placed two. And uh, next time I can place two. So you can see like I'm keeping the point inside a square and I am just pressing. And you can also see like you get the feel of the point moving smoothly uh, because of uh, what I discussed before. We are reading the buffer information and we are all writing the point information there. Okay, so now FPGA was about to win. So I am blocking him. So he again got four consecutively. Again, I am trying to block, but uh, I guess he's going to win already. Okay, so he won. So you can see on on top right side here, we'll say like FPJ run and the game will restart. And in that case, FPJ will start the game. So he already plays the black one and we are playing with white and uh, each time we have to place two white stones and it, it goes on. So next time the first chance will be to the user. So on and so forth. Okay, so I hope uh, uh, you can also try this out. Okay, thank you.